Hey, it's John Lee Dumas of EO Fire, and it's The Entrepreneurial You, the show for dedicated and passionate Caribbean entrepreneurs seeking daily inspiration, brought to you by author, speaker, and award-winning entrepreneur, Henneka Watkins-Porter. You must be prepared to ignite. The statistics that I've seen is that 70% of the people that read reviews trust them as much as a recommendation from a friend. If you're looking at for a business and you have no reviews, that means you're probably going to be 70% more likely to choose the business that has reviews than the one that doesn't. Hi, this is Henneko. I'm so glad you took the time to stop by today. In Jamaican parlance, wagwan. I'm glad to say dial. This episode is sponsored by HennekeWatkinsporter.com as well as the Jamaica Stock Exchange. Now on HennekeWatkinsporter.com, you can visit us for blogs, resources, books, online podcast courses, podcasts, and more. If you are new to the Entrepreneur New Podcast, be sure to check out past episodes with guests such as John Lee Dumas, Patrice Washington, Seth Godin, Richard Branson, Amy Porterfield, and a host of other game changers. We needed to raise capital, but our experience with local financial institutions was that they were cautious and slow to act, and interest rates were far too high. We had real concerns about financing our business through outside equity investors and the possibility of interference. Could we get a fair valuation for our business? We had our own ideas about the business and its value. Should I go the traditional route of bank financing or should I try the Jamaica Stock Exchange? So we made a call and experienced transformation of our business through conversations. I'm John Mafood, CEO of Jamaican Teas, and we're listed on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. Give us a call today at 876-967-3271 to begin your transformation through conversation. We want to see your company listed on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. And now, here's today's episode. Nothing ruins your day more than getting a bad review. Taylor Swift. Hey, my peak performers, how are you doing today? Welcome to episode 173 of the Entrepreneurial You podcast. I'm Henneke Watkiss Porter. Today's episode is with George Wardman, and George is a founder of five companies, three exits, and still running two. He's still running two of those companies. He's a founder of One Stop Dev Shop.io, software and design agency, and online reputation management software, Rave Review. I'm looking forward to our conversation on leveraging reviews to grow your business. Welcome, George. Hi, how are you, Henneke? Excited to be on the show. So glad to have you as well. I'm doing great. So um, based on your reaction with any, with any Jamaicans, if you've had, what's the one thing that stands out for you? If you've had any interaction with any Jamaicans? Well, they're lovely people. Um, I'm a big, uh, big fan of the um, reggae music. So, um, yeah, everything about the Caribbean I, I, I like. Oh, that's that's nice to know. All right, let's talk about leveraging reviews to grow your business. When we talk about reviews, what are we talking about really? So reviews mostly is like um, on, on Facebook or Google. Um, uh, it could be Amazon reviews. Um, so, but the the ones that um, we find most important for, say, like a small um, B and B or um, hotel, like in Jamaica, they might be concerned with their reviews, and um, that's what we help them with. Is just sort of the biggest problem that we found um, is that it seems like most of the the most people that want to leave reviews are the ones that had an experience, bad experience, um, and so of course that's damaging to the the business's uh, business when they when you have a bad review and it just sort of lingers around on the review page. Mm-hmm. So um, how important or why are reviews important for for a business? Well, reviews are uh, reviews are really um, the best way people can get an objective um, um, opinion on a business. So, for example, if you're sitting in. Um, you know, somewhere in Europe or in the U.S. and you wanted to go down to visit a hotel in the Caribbean, 
You might um, just look around and there's, you know, let's say you're going to Negril or something and there's 15 uh, hotels around, but you don't really know which one is uh, is is the best. Reviews is the first place that I would go and you're probably like me. You would go and look and just to see and read a few. Um, the first thing I look at is like what, what's the uh, who's got the most reviews and who's got the highest average. And and then I would kind of go down from there. I mean, I don't necessarily need to stay at the one that has the most reviews and the best average, but I certainly don't want to stay at one that has like, you know, a 3.5 average. That's to me like anything kind of below 4.1 is like I would never go there, you know, especially if there's other options. Right. So what kind of businesses, um, you know, mainly should rely, should be relying on reviews to help, um, you know, grow their business? Really? I mean, they help almost all businesses, uh, especially small businesses, but hotels, especially. Um, we're currently doing it for music teachers. So um, that's that's an area that we found has been being underserved. But you can imagine, like, there's music teachers in every town. So, um uh, we, we help music teachers focus on sort of differentiating between their uh, peers or competitors in, in a certain town. And um, but it really, you know, it could be anything. It's uh, we see it, it's important for salons and yoga studios and car dealers, um, you know, even uh, lawyers and um um, you know, the plastic surgeries, I mean, all it's for, important for almost uh, every business. Do you have any statistics of hand to say, you know, to compare those businesses that um, don't solicit inter- uh, reviews versus those that do and kind of what's the difference? So the, st- the statistics that I've seen is that 70 percent of the people that read reviews trust them as much as a recommendation from a friend. Uh, so if you're if you're looking at for a business um, and you have no reviews, that means you're probably going to be 70 percent more likely to choose the business that has reviews than the one that doesn't. How does one go about getting a review? Because, I mean, some people are very bashful, even as entrepreneurs, bashful about asking for inter- uh, reviews or, you know, how, how do you go about what are some of the best practices in going about getting reviews? Well, the biggest thing really is asking for them. So the, the, the process that we use, and, and you can even sort of try and um, do this yourself, but it's important to get an email. So if you're like a, like a hair salon or something, try and get the emails of the people. And the same goes if you're a, uh, like a hotel or, um, you know, uh, any, any type of uh, other business. If you can get the email, then you can at least ask them. Um, and so what we've done is we automate by sending a short survey. Um, so for example, the, we asked two questions. Um, how likely are you to recommend and how was your experience? And we, we asked them to, you know, I'm sure you've seen it, but it's basically uh, star, stars one through five. And the ones that are four and five in this survey, we go on to ask them to um, leave a number of reviews, leave a review on, on Facebook or um, Google. And if there's one through three, then, then we ask them to um, – we, we send that notification right to the front desk manager, to the uh, person who's ever in charge of customer service to make sure that they contact the customer so that um, um, they can stop them from leaving a negative review. And so, and so that's, uh, that's what we do to mitigate. Um, so, but essentially if, if you were trying to do this yourself, the, the biggest thing is really just uh, talking to your customers, asking how, how is your experience and how likely would you be to recommend those two questions we've found are the key. And you, you know, you sometimes see like people leave these huge paper surveys in the lobby of a hotel and, um, we found much higher take up if you only ask those two questions because those are the ones that really matter, right? So you have reviews, of course, and they can be negative or they can be positive. Let's start with the negative ones. Um, how do you respond and how, you know, best practices in terms of responding to uh, a review that isn't so, so positive and putting the business in a, in a bad light? 
So the first thing that we recommend is that you not – if you read a bad review, we, we recommend that you take 24 hours to respond. And that's sort of just, you know, sort of take the, the, the heat of the moment out so you don't come in and sort of – I remember this customer and they were such a pain. Um, so if you, if you wait 24 hours, you can kind of think about it and, and you – um, and you can respond more cool headed because once you leave your that response, it doesn't go away. Um, you know, it, it's and then you could start a whole thread there and it could snowball and become a lot worse. And I've seen some um, responses of people, uh, of business owners responding to um, a less than flattering review. And, and basically it goes viral and puts that business owner out of business. Um, so. So the thing is, the main thing is is to be cordial and to be polite, uh, and um, and just go through and and even maybe think about what you, what, you, what your counter argument is, and um, at times um, we've had some clients that have been able to reverse the 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 bad review and they respond and maybe they reach out to them offline and take care of it uh, the situation and the the person will come back. And actually change that bad the one star review to a five star review. We see that actually all the time, um, especially in Amazon. You're talking about changing, you know, changing a review and stuff. I mean, but if that's how somebody feels, that's how they feel. So, is that um, ethical? Is that you know? Um, no, you can't change it. The customer has to change it. Mm-hmm. But you can convince that you can persuade the customer to change it. So right, that's what I mean. The it, customer changing it, even having the customer yeah. changing. I mean, if that's what they feel, how they feel initially, based on how they were treated, right, or their experience, it is what it is. It, wouldn't you say? Or um, what could have well, no, caused there could them to be change like your mind? A, there could have been like a miscommunication. So, so for example, um, they, you know, like. Uh, you know, something may have happened. Let's say, oh, I couldn't believe it. I came in this night and nobody was at the front desk. Well, maybe the person that was at the front desk was having a baby or something and they were at the hospital, you know. And so that person that was there um, might not have known that. But then when when they said, oh, I was waiting there for, you know, 20 minutes, at, at the, you know, for some towels or something. And and then the, the, the business owner could write and says, oh, I'm so sorry, you know. We actually there was an accident or something was was happening. It's like, um, please, we'll offer you, um, you know, uh, you know, some kind of a coupon or whatever, you know, like a, a free breakfast the next day. And then if you make that sort of if you make amends on that situation, the person can be like, oh, well, I didn't know that. I'm more than happy to, um, you know, change, change my review. And we've seen that quite a lot. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's not like you're you're not bribing or anything like that. Still on the, the negative review, let's talk about the, the tone that, you know, let's say you're not making a call to the person, to your customer, but you're responding online in the very same platform that they've um, posted on. Uh, what sort of tone? What are the considerations for the tone and stuff that one needs to, to take? I would be as neutral as you can be and um, and then just be as, as polite and, and as dignified as you can be. Uh, because um, when people are reading the negative reviews, they always look at the reply to. Uh, and so it's important to see, like, is this person being unreasonable? Um, you know, sometimes people do have valid um, excuses, a common one to say it was like, it was New Year's, you know, it's like, oh, well, there was fireworks and it was keeping me up all night. You know, that's, that has nothing to do with the business owner. So the business owner could say, well, you know, it was New Year's or it was some um, national holiday and that's why it was loud and um, we apologize for that. But people can see then it's like, well, this guest is just being unreasonable, you know, I mean, it was New Year's, what did they expect? Uh, and and so that's important to sort of lay out that your 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 uh, counter argument or your your uh, response to a negative review. Of course, to the positive ones. Really is important. Yeah, I just say, oh, thank you so much. It, you know, it's um, um, you know, it's always good to acknowledge um, your praise, and also it's it, it's it's important to see what you're doing right too. And and one thing I didn't mention was if if the if somebody leaves you a bad review. Uh, it's important to sort of address that because it's likely that there's other people that have been thinking it and it's a way, it's an opportunity to make your business better. So it's important to take those comments and feedback and then build those 
into your um, into some way of correcting your your business to make it better. So it's an opportunity, either positive or negative, to make your your business better. Okay. So uh, would you recommend that you know you respond to all all reviews, whether positive or negative, and every single one of them, um, and and regardless of time constraints, you know, factor that into consideration. Yes, I think, you know, if you can assign someone like something, sometimes um, you might have a front desk girl that has uh, some some extra time and she can go through. If somebody has a one, if you have like, um, you know, reviews are pretty, they come in few, few and far between unless you're like a, you know, thousand room hotel or something. Um, you know, most of the time you small businesses are getting like one or two a month. I think it's important to just sort of acknowledge, um, so just say, write a quick thank you and say, Oh, thank you so much. And, you know, just acknowledge that person. And, um, it'll encourage people like to be appreciated. You know, if they do something, um, nice for you, they like to be acknowledged and appreciated. Another thing I want to ask you, George, is where best to, to have reviews placed or do you select multiple options and what are those options? What are those platforms that we can use to have customer reviews? Well, for in terms of search and, and organic search, I, I think Google is the best. Um, so it depends on where some businesses may not may not um, really use Google that much. Uh, maybe the most of their business is done through Instagram or Facebook. Um, these would probably be really small businesses. Um, if most of your communication is done with your your clients through Facebook, then obviously you want to concentrate on Facebook. And so the one thing that we recommend is that you don't dilute your your efforts. So you don't say um, you go to Google and then the next time you go to Facebook uh, for a different client. We say you know focus and and do like a concentrated campaign to build whichever page review platform that you're trying to, to, to build uh, and get it up so that it's like that, you know, sort of in the top sort of four in your market. So, um, and then you can focus on on a different platform. So, um, but Google is the one that we, that we fo- t- tell our clients to focus on because it's the one that, um, you know, if you're searching for a hair salon or something, in in your market the first thing that will come up are the there's three businesses with reviews that kind of pop up on the top of the search results and if you can rank high there you can get a lot of business from that so you mentioned um google and facebook but what are some of the other platforms that persons can think of and um maybe you can relate it to what business would be more appropriate for those platforms Sure. So TripAdvisor is important. Um, and that would be, uh, this like, um, travel related uh, businesses. So it could be like tours or, um, hotels, Airbnb ones. You can, you know, there's reviews in that platform as well. And, um, those are important. Now there's some new ones popping up for like, uh, more, um, software related businesses, which is like Captera and G2. Those are some other platforms that, that, um, you know, it depends on what your business. I don't not sure who your audience is, but those are those ones are becoming quite important. Okay. Okay. So we're talking to entrepreneurs who have a myriad of different types of business and that's who we're talking with. Where in Google do you set up what do you what do you set up to get that review page going? Yeah, it's called Google My Business. Um and so for the owner, the the business owner, you can you can go and, and go through. It's pretty easy. I've done it myself a few times. Um you, you go through and you just sort of, you know, give your local address and um, write down a description of what your business is, your business hours. Um, and then they ask you to claim the business. So if you have an address, there is some verification that's involved. And usually it's uh, like texting to the local phone. And some I believe they were even sending postcards um, just to verify that if they mail a postcard. I'm, I'm not sure if they're doing that. When I did it, I didn't have to do it. So but I, I heard that they were. They used to do that. So that's that's essentially um, the Google setup. If you're leaving a review, um, it's it's as a customer, it's it's easy to do. You just come there and you should have a Google account, at least. And most people probably already have Gmail or some kind of way. Google log in um, and then you just you just um, click write a review. They ask you to log in and then you just, um, you know, hit your star rating and and, and write some kind of um, review for that business. Mm-hmm. So, George, um, in our final segment, I want to ask you to just share, you know, something about reviews and how we can help 
uh, businesses and why. And I know we've said we've started that. Um, we've said some of that before. But if you will, just go ahead and, and give your final thoughts on reviews. Sure. Yeah. So um, if you're if you're having trouble on getting reviews, I encourage you to ask people because you'd be surprised at how much people are willing to to leave reviews. Um, and if you don't, the the problem again, as I had stated, is most of the people that want to write reviews are the ones that had a bad experience. So you want to try and um, outweigh those. Um, you know, because if you're a successful business, eight out of nine people should be enjoying. Sorry, eight out of ten people or should be enjoying your business, and you're always going to have the one or two sort of bad experiences. But if you if you don't ask the the other eight, they they may not leave your uh, leave a review for your business, and your business could suffer. So, um, and and you can imagine how how quickly um, you know if you if you are ask if you have a bad review, you start losing business. You can keep asking and push that bad review down, and then it just sort of dilutes its effects. Um, so that's what I would I would I would encourage people do. And of course, the best way to do that is if you can is automating that process. So you did mention you have a free consultation to to um, to share to the listeners. So I'd love for you to share that as well as to share how persons may get in touch with you. Yeah, sure. So um, you can get on our one stop dev shop dot io. There's a button for book a call. And that's really um, a seg. I've been an entrepreneur for, for 15 years and I'm happy to sort of talk through any ideas that people may have and uh, especially software related. Um, I, I build uh, my own software companies and I build other people's companies and I've gotten pretty good at knowing what's a viable um, business idea. So if anyone has some software ideas and they want to talk about it, I'd love to hear from them. Ah, sounds good. Excellent. And you've already given us where we can contact you. Thank you, George Wardman, for stopping by the Entrepreneur Review today. Thank you so much for having me, Hanika. And thank you, my peak performer, for tuning in to this episode of the Entrepreneur Review Podcast with George Wardman. I certainly look forward to connecting with you next week. And of course, you know where you can contact me if you need to reach me before, if you want to get my books, whatever you want, blogs, whatever, HenikaWatkinsPorter.com podcast power the quick start guide to launching and leveling up your brand is available on amazon as well as on my website so go get it go fetch it go learn to start your podcast especially in this season that you can make a difference you can let your voice be heard and so many other uh, perks as you build your brand let me share my point of hope for this week and without faith it is impossible to please him for whoever would draw near to god must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him Hebrews 11 verse 6. What good 